Thank you for joining us for Virtual Ignite Hope. We're so excited that you're here with us this year. Nine years ago, our daughter Katie spent the holidays in the hospital battling cancer, so we do know firsthand what it's like to be in the hospital and not able to go home for the holidays. And I know that that first Ignite Hope ignited hope in us and in Katie. That very first year when Katie was diagnosed in 2011, there were two girls from CCV that heard of Katie's story and they decided to put out on social media that there was going to be a candlelight ceremony. And so they put it out there and probably 400, 400. people came. She just sat there with tears in her eyes looking at all the people that were out there for her. It was, I mean, it was amazing. When you're in the hospital over the holidays, you feel like you're forgotten, like life is just going on for everybody else. So for her to have that support and see all those people out there, man, it lifted her spirits, lifted mine. Our hearts go out to all the patients and families at Phoenix Children's who are looking for hope this holiday season. And for all those families who joined us in the past, igniting hope in us, and for those who are joining us virtually this year, thank you. Thank you for shining your light. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. husband was at work so I got to the car and I started crying and then I called them and I told them uh, that our baby's got hypoplastic left heart. She looked up at me and she was just like like a normal baby and, and then she and then she wasn't she wasn't there like that's that's hard like she, she died like my baby was dead and and then she wasn't <laughs> the team stepped in so fast and helped her and then she got a heart and we got another chance <laughs> With the heart, she just lived a, a normal, a normal life. If you didn't see the scar from open heart surgery, you wouldn't know she wasn't a regular kid. Mm -hmm. She was telling her right side to do something, and it wasn't listening to her. She had trouble with uh, name recollection of regular kind of objects. Uh, she couldn't remember what certain things were called. I think the most hard thing is like. She herself knows what she used to be, and so yeah. the fact that she can't do the things that she she loved before, like she she loved dancing before, she doesn't she won't even do dancing now because she doesn't want everyone looking at her. She has never said or complained about it or felt any self pity. She just kind of has been a champ all the way through it. She's an amazing person. She's gone through mm -hmm. so much and. She is a hero, so. I just want her to have a fulfilled happiness. Yeah. I, I, want, I want her to get what she dreams. I want her to become whatever she wants. 
I want her to get married if she wants to get married. I want her to have kids if she wants to have kids. I just want her to be happy. Never, never uh, are thinking that your kid is going to be admitted into the ICU with a very bad heart problem. He was going to school, he was, you know, doing everything we thought it was normal. I was the worst nightmare that you would think that you would receive and it was totally unbelievable. The doctor told us that there was nothing else they could do in Puerto Rico. He was in a hurry to transfer Gustavo somewhere because he was seeing that Gustavo was deteriorating, he was, he was not improving. Two weeks after Gustavo was here already, he had to be intubated and they started giving, giving him a lot of medications to help improve that, but nothing worked. Seeing your kid with, you know, connected to that ECMO machine, it's one of the worst experiences of your life. I was scared to death, mm -hmm. but deep down I was very confident that all was going to be well. And Gustavo is a warrior, is a fighter, and I knew that he was going to give, it, give his all to get back up. We have come to learn to just, you know, work on whatever comes our way, you know, and just fight it. Since day one, we have told everyone in PCH that we plan to go back to Puerto Rico. The, we don't plan to stay in Phoenix. Uh, it's difficult. We have everything back home, family, work, friends, everything. We are, we are hopeful, but as, as the same as we came here, is whatever needs to be done for Gustavo. If we need to stay here, we will stay here. He's a champion. He <laughs> really is a champion. He's a hero. He's my hero, actually. <laughs>
And who is that? Okay. Is that Bunko Bear? Hmm? Who's that? It's so hard to see him going through everything because especially as a baby, you don't you don't want to see him connected to any kind of tubes or anything like that. It's devastating, you know, because it's like this is your baby, you want to like have fun with him, but you can't, you know. So I was pregnant. Um, we went for the 20 week anatomy scan and that's when they noticed that something wasn't right and then found out that um, he had double inlet left ventricle. There were so many what ifs. We ended up being admitted to the hospital when he was about eight weeks old. Yeah, it was nerve wracking. We were in and out of the hospital for about the first two years of his birth. Yeah, so the first year. First he, year we were there almost nine months. Yeah, was, we spent a lot of time at PCH. Every time we got to go home, we were like excited because we wanted to have a child and like take him to the park and take him to the zoo and stuff like that. But then we'd have to turn right back around and have to get readmitted because he was having some sort of issue. It was really hard, especially for like our relationship, you know, because we had so much emotion behind it and we didn't know, we didn't know how to express it or how to talk about it or what we needed to do because we had no idea like what was in store. You know, you're going to get to a situation where you think that nothing's going to get better, it's not working, nothing's happening, nothing's changing. But then in time, like, it does get better and they get through it, you know, and they get stronger and healthier and it does get easier. Everything's been pretty good. He's had a few episodes where his heart rate was spiked, but for the most part, in the last couple of years, things have been really good, actually. You would never know the guy's been through four heart surgeries. Mm -hmm. I just wish that he just has a happy life and that he can do what he wants to do and not be held back, you know, with anything. Oh, we're just hoping that, you know, he can play sports and be a normal kid and enjoy life. And now for my favorite time of the night, lighting the Christmas tree. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, folks! Merry Christmas! Nothing brings me more pleasure than being able to spread gifts and joy around the world. But many children will not be home this Christmas season. The sick and injured end up in the hospitals. What we want to do is wish them the best Christmas ever. People all across Arizona are turning on lights to help ignite hope for these children that are in the hospital. We want to thank those people for their support, and we want to wish the children the best Christmas season ever. Ooh, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light From now on Our troubles will be out of sight Have yourself a merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide gay From now on Our troubles will be miles away Happy golden days of yours Faithful friends who are dear to us Gather near to us once more Through the years we all will be together If the fates allow Hang a shine